is there anybody in there? Is there anyone home? I was thinking over the weekend. Well, we had talked of Marceau, his mama, and then Camus, his mama, and then her mom, grandma. All the grandmas I know, heard of, including my own. They're filled with love and good intentions. And so Camus' grandma, perhaps there's a little unsaid. What I want to try and do is say a couple of more stories with the intention of turning darkness into twilight, as far as our opinion of her is concerned. Camus' grandma. Camus was critical of her because they never got along. Her instructions to him was not to play soccer because it would wear out the soles of his shoes, you know, playing on those hard surfaces. But it would seem that she was asking for the impossible because young Albert was the king of soccer, extremely gifted, talented, admired by his friends, peers, a real inspiration to his schoolmates. And due to this, he was constantly in trouble at home. The beatings would continue and sometimes in hopelessness. Grandma would say, you are headed for the gallows. You're headed in a noose. It could be the reason why Merceau, in the story of the stranger, gets the capital punishment. Camel was perhaps putting an end to this prophecy, finding closure to the memory of these psychological taunts. But there were lighter moments. For example, going to the cinema was a leisure activity that everybody enjoyed, looked forward to. Black and white, silent movies with subtitles. Camus had to be seated right next to Grandma because she was illiterate and it was his job to read out the subtitles to her so she could follow along. Of course there was shushing, embarrassment for young Albert. But he improvised. He learned to summarize and tell her the shortened version in loud whispers. On some occasions before the movie would start, lights turning low, Grandma would speak in a loud voice. I've forgotten my spectacles. You'll have to read to me. And so that was Grandma, doing the best she could, the best way she knew how. And so to all the grandmas out there, we the baby grand love you all unconditionally. Here she comes. Oh, Majestic, the belted kingfisher, a frequent guest at the old grizzly. Breakfast, mainly. Like many, Evian, the Blanc fascinated me. And in the summer, this contact, it's more frequent. Perhaps it's their ability to soar. Such a cliché. A cliché, you say? Well, why is it that people who want to meditate, they seek out mountaintops, plateaus on the hills? Is it the air, the unobstructed views, the sound of silence? Seems to me we are programmed to aim higher. Perhaps it's the reason why we admire beings that can soar. Then there's the rhetoric of, well, living aloft is the best way to see and be seen by the most. See and be seen by who? Does it mean that you would develop a natural distrust, loathing for geologists, speleologists? Oh, don't worry, just banter. Aim higher, those supreme summits, fresh air, unobstructed views on a good day, the tranquility of nature, all the necessary ingredients to lead an extraordinary life. Someday they would define what constitutes an extraordinary life. How would we recognize, judge them, doubtless by their behavior, the totality of their deeds, the consequences caused in life by their presence? Could you say it like that? 